In the spring of 2015, the American Hereford Association released other EPDs, so um, scores for both suspension and teat size. And those scoring systems are based on one to nine scorings, with one being the least desirable in each category and nine being the most desirable. Those scores become very useful for using uh, or calculating EPDs and genetic evaluation. As we consider the scoring system, it's important to understand the differences between the relative measures from one to nine. We'll focus on utter suspension first. Um, the very poorest or worst score is a number one, um, and that represents a very pendulous udders or broken down. Think bowling ball in gunny sack. Those udders typically um, swing very much as the cow walks, and udders that score one are much more prone to injury and damage because of their proximity to the ground um, and their activity. As we move up the scale, a number three would be what we call a pendulous udder, so some of the same characteristics as a number one, just not as extreme. They would have somewhat stronger attachments um, in terms of fore udder and rear udder, um, and maybe more cleavage in terms of differentiation between the left quarters and right quarters when viewed from behind the cow. As we move up the scale to a, a more a desirable level, a number five, which we would call an intermediate or moderate in terms of suspension. Certainly a cow that's acceptable um, in terms of suspension, um, but we may like to improve her in terms of symmetry um, and uniformity in, in size of quarters and levelness of utter floor. As we move up the scale to a number seven is what we would call a tight udder or one that's very closely held to the body. Typically a very moderately sized to smaller sized udder um, that has strong fore udder attachment um, and a strong wide rear udder attachment as well. These udders typically are very balanced in terms of their size of quarters from front to rear and left to right when, it's when viewed from behind. Uh, a number nine would be what we would classify as a very tight udder. Um, and these attachments, you typically see almost no movement of the udder independent of the cow as she travels. Next, we'll consider the teat size attributes of the udder. And we'll begin at the very worst or number one category. Number ones describe very large or balloon shaped teats. These teats may also be funnel shaped in that they may have a very small um, apex at the, the end of the teat. Um, but as they approach the udder become very wide and large in circumference. Um, these udders when combined with large teat size are very difficult for newborn calves to nurse. As we move up the scale towards more desirable um, uh, teat size characteristics, a number three would be what we would typically call a large teat size. These would be teats that are typically two and a half to five inches in length and maybe an inch and a half to two or three inches in diameter. Very large teats, again, very difficult for newborn calves to suckle um, and absorb colostrum during nursing during the first 12 hours of life. A number five would be an intermediate or moderate teat size. These would be more towards the desirable side in terms of teats that are more uniform in terms of size and dimension um, from top to bottom. So the, the circumference as the teat uh, connects to the udder is nearly the same diameter the extent uh, or the length of the teat um, and typically have um, four teats that are almost the same size. As we move up the scale towards more desirable we would have uh, what we call a seven or a small size teat. Um, these would be teats that are roughly the diameter of your thumb or smaller um, and about that length or shorter um, and very easy for newborn calves to nurse. Um, and a nine would be what we call very small um, and these would be teats that are very short um, in length um, and narrow in diameter, typically very uniformly placed underneath the udder, under each quarter, um, and symmetric in their location. This udder is scored a 9-9, nine -nine, so 9 for suspension and 9 for teat size. This nearly ideal udder is symmetric in terms of its appearance when viewed from the side, it has a level udder floor that's parallel to the ground, and a long fore udder attachment. The teats are small in size and nearly uh, symmetric in terms of their placement underneath each quarter of the udder. The attachment is strong with a long fore udder attachment. This represents strength of attachment to the cow's body wall. It scored 7-6. Seven, 7 for suspension, 6 for teat size. As we view the udder from the side, we notice that it's held tightly next to the body wall representing strength of attachment. Um, we do notice though that there is some quartering and decrease in udder quality with larger teats that are slightly larger in circumference at the top um, than at the bottom and slightly longer compared to an ideal teat size. 
Bears scored 2-2. Two, two. So two for suspension and two for teat size. In terms of suspension, this udder is uh, moderately pendulous. If we view it from the side, we notice a se severe slope to the udder floor um, going from front to rear. And we also notice in terms of teat quality that the teats are rather balloon shaped with much larger tops uh, attached to the quarter um, than at the bottom. This would make it difficult for a calf to nurse and create some substantial udder problems in terms of both quality and performance. This udder is scored 2-1, two, two for suspension, one for teat size. As we view the udder from the side, we notice that there's a severe slope in the quarters from front to rear. The udder floor is not level. We also see some asymmetry in terms of quarter size. The rear quarters are much larger than the fore quarters. In terms of teat quality, we notice that they are very uh, balloon shaped with much larger circumferences at the top than at the bottom, and this would cause substantial difficulty in calf nursing. This udder is scored 7-4. Seven, 7 for suspension, 4 for teat size. As we view the udder from the side, we see that it is tightly held to the body and has a relatively level udder floor. The teats are symmetric in terms of their placement underneath the quarters, representing some uh, substantial udder quality. We do notice, though, that in terms of teat size, they're slightly larger than we'd like, um, with some imbalance between front and rear teats. This udder is scored a 7-7. Seven, 7 seven for suspension, 7 for teat size. As we view the profile of the cow, we notice this udder is tightly held to the body and has some substantial quality. We could improve it, improve it by having more balance between front and rear quarter size and leveling the udder floor. In terms of teat size, they're nearly ideal in terms of small, evenly sized teats um, that aren't particularly long. This udder is scored a 5-5. Five, five. As we view the udder from the side, we notice that it has some slope to the udder floor with slightly larger rear quarters than fore quarters. We do notice the attachments are relatively strong, but we'd like to improve udder quality by evening balance uh, and symmetry. As we view the teats, we'd like to see them slightly shorter um, and smaller in diameter and more uniform placement below the quarters to improve quality. This udder is scored a 3-3. Three, three. three for suspension, three for teat size. As we view the profile of the female and notice this udder's imbalance in terms of front and rear quarter size, we do see some slight quartering between fore and rear quarters. Um, to improve this female's udder, we'd like to improve the strength of the median suspensionary ligament, ligament that holds the cow's udder to her body wall. In addition, the teat size uh, is somewhat large and the teats are rather long, causing difficulty for calf nursing. This udder is scored a 5-4, so 5 for suspension, 4 for teat size. As we view the other from the side, we see some quartering and imbalance in terms of size of front and rear quarters. To improve quality, we'd like to see a leveler udder floor and stronger both fore and rear attachments, improving the strength of this udder and its longevity. In terms of teat size, we do see some slight ballooning at the top with larger circumference of the udder and the teat um, at the udder junction, as well as rather long teats. To improve this, we'd like to see more symmetry in both placement and size. This udder is scored a 5-6. 5 for suspension, 6 for teat size. This udder is slightly off balance as we view it from the side with larger rear quarters than fore quarters and some quartering observed between fore and rear. To improve quality, we'd like to see a leveler udder floor and stronger fore udder attachment with a smoother blending to the body wall. In terms of teat size, they're somewhat average in terms of both size and diameter. We'd like to see them slightly smaller um, and more uniform in terms of their circumference from top to bottom. This udder is scored a 7-5. Seven, 7 for suspension, 5 for teat size and quality. As we view this udder from the side, we observe that it's slightly off balance in terms of a larger rear quarter than fore quarters, and we'd like to have the udder floor more level to the ground. In terms of uh, quality, we do see some quartering, and we'd like to see more uniformity in terms of balance of the udder. However, in terms of teat size, she would be in the moderate range in terms of teat size and length, ideally she would be shorter and smaller in diameter. This udder is scored 9-8. Nine, 9 for suspension, 8 for teat size. This nearly ideal udder has nice symmetry and balance in terms of front and rear quarters. If we could change it though, we'd like to see more evenness in terms of udder floor and uniformity of profile. The, udder, the teat size is scored an 8. As we notice, um, these are rather small teats, but if we view them closely, we notice that they are somewhat more funnel shaped at the top than at the bottom. Um, this gives a slightly decreased quality in terms of teat size and placement. This udder is scored 8-7. 8 for suspension, 7 for teat size. 
most of us would agree this is a relatively high quality udder, although there's a couple of points to make uh, uh, point out for improvement. As we view the udder from the side, we notice some lack of symmetry in terms of balance between fore and rear quarters. In this case, the rear quarters are slightly larger or heavier than the fore quarters. In terms of teat size and quality, we notice some differences as well. The rear teats are nearly ideal in terms of size and placement, being small and directly under the quarter. Um, as we observe the front teats, though, they're slightly larger and longer and more funnel-shaped at the top, indicating lower teat quality. Get in the habit of scoring udders when collecting calving ease and birth data. Make udder score collection a routine part of your performance data collection system. Until you get comfortable with the scoring system, tape a scoring guide to your clipboard or reduce a copy um, and put in your red book or calving book for use in the field. Try to get as close as you can to the guide and be as consistent as possible from scoring event to scoring event. Once you do it for a while, you'll start picking out the really good ones from the really bad ones quite easily. Be honest with yourself and use as much of the scale as needed. If she's a one on suspension and a one on teat size, give the scores. Your customers expect it.